Hello everyone, this is going to be just a little bit different actually, yeah, I don't know about different, it's just been a little while since I've been here. Um, we're actually going to cover three different things today. I'm titling this, um, what are question marks, but this really doesn't pertain so much to question marks, just as what they actually do, sort of a popular question. Um, what are the question marks, what are the double question marks, what are the question marks in this instance, so I'm going to go over those real quick. Um, to do it, uh, I went ahead and set up something a little bit different today. Um, set up a project in WPF instead of the normal WinForms or console application. Um, just felt like doing a WPF, plus I wanted something a little bit darker because by default WinForms is very bright. Um, WPF is too, but it's really, really easy to get dark colors and get everything to mimic what I, um, I guess, like a little bit more. Um, so here we've got a WPF form um, with just three labels and three text boxes. Um, I have named uh, just the text boxes um, to some very simple to keep track of names. Uh, they should be, oh, here we go, uh, TXT first, TXT identity number, and TXT last. So this is first, this is last, and this is identity number. And then I have also went ahead and set up just a couple of uh, methods that I'm going to use a little bit later. Um, so the first one I've got a an extension method for check null that we'll be using a little bit later. If you want to go ahead and take a second to catch up um, with what we've done so far, probably not a terrible idea if you want to follow along. Um, another thing I'm going to do a little bit different is uh, I will post in the comments a link to a uh, GitHub with the code when I'm done. Um, something I've been asked for on another video a couple times, so I figure might as well start doing it. Um, so here we have the uh, extension method for the check null, and then a public class person. Um, that doesn't do a whole lot right now. Um, mostly it's just properties for going over the question marks. Um, so the first one that we have for the question mark is actually right here at the end of this int. Um, what that is is that is for uh, nullable types. So we have a lot of um, types that can't be null by default. Um, what that basically boils down to is if in the constructor of the uh, type it doesn't have a default value. Um, so like an int by default can't be null. Um, and even if you, yeah, we'll just start off here, but we'll take our new person that we've already started, and we'll say our new staff member dot identity number is null. Okay, so we can do that because it is a nullable type. However, if it were not a nullable, then we would see we've got an error here. So we'll go ahead and make sure that's still nullable and then we'll go ahead and move on. Um, so, just trying to get my bearings just a little bit here. Um, so the second use case um, that we're going to see with the question marks is going to be what's called a null coalescing operator. Um, and basically all that does is, so normally if you wanted to check something for null, you would do something like uh, There, you'd have to do something like this. Yep. Yeah, and of course it helps if I type out everything I need to. Here we go. And then if we ran this, we would see that it will give us please set ID. Um, so what you can do to get around this is you can use the uh, null coalescing operator. And so what we would do there is instead of having this um, we would do something like, um, we'll go ahead and do first name real quick, um, because, or, yep, we'll do first name here. Uh, okay. I 
Okay, so this basically would do the same thing as that um, format we had a second ago with the if something is null, then do something. Um, it's the exact same concept here. We've got um, basically saying if new staff member dot first name um, use a null coalescing operator uh, is null, then use the value on the right. If it's not, go ahead and use the value on the left right here, and then it sets it to the txt first dot text. And then we can see that in action right here. There, where it's set the first name to John. And then we can easily fix that if we knew ahead of time what the new staff member's first name was going to be and did this the way we actually wanted to. Then we would just say it's one. There you go. So it's just a real easy way to kind of shorten that, clean that up, and do the same thing. Um, makes it a little bit more readable once you get used to the null coalescing operator. Um, really handy, and I like it a lot. Next up for question marks, we have the conditional operator. Um, this one is going to work a little bit like the null coalescing, where it's going to check a condition and if it's true return the value on the left if it's false it'll return the value on the right so I'm actually gonna leave this right here and then for the uh, let's go with the last name we're gonna set that to We're basically saying here if new staff member that last name is null, um, if that's true, we're going to use the person class and get dough, nothing too fancy. Um, if it's false, then we're going to do uh, mm, trying to just see here why we are not happy Okay, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Cause I don't see what I did wrong. Oh. Uh, uh, for some reason, I keep wanting to forget to add all the important parts of the text box. Okay, so concept remains the same. We've got the if, essentially right here, new staff member dot last name is null then get dough which is right here it'll just return dough else new staff member dot last name and then whatever we get from this expression we're gonna get into the text box so there we go and then that would still work exactly the same where if we were um, actually doing this a little bit more right and making sure we had a value then we would get Smith instead in that same operation um, with the uh, conditional operator of the question mark uh, you can actually use a uh, method as well as long as it returns a boolean so we can do uh, instead of equals null we can actually use this is null method right here that extension method so the way this one will work is it'll take the new staff member dot last name and then uh, as a string right here and then if it is null because eh, why use the new stuff we just learned we'll keep this a little bit easier for you then we'll return true uh, else it'll go ahead and return false so if we run it right now it's gonna return false and we're gonna get Smith as the last name 
if we fix this, or break it depending on how you look at it, then we're going to go ahead and get Doe for the last name again. So here we have Juan Doe. And then, hey, his identity number is text number, because we've never gotten around to handling that, I suppose. Um, and then the last thing that we can do, still using that same uh, operator, is you can do expressions there too and not just methods. So we can actually say uh, message box dot show and then we're gonna say eh, is 5 less than 10? If it is then we're gonna write yes. If it's not then we're gonna write no. And there we go, we've got yes right there. And then all we'd have to do to get the other value is 5 greater than 10. And we get a no. So that is actually the end of the what are question marks. Um, basically we've got the uh, three different things that the question mark can be doing on exactly how you're using it. You've either got the nullable types, um, the null coalescing, which we apparently, oh, nope, we did keep one uh, right there, which is the double question mark, and then we've got the uh, uh, essentially a boolean operator for it. Um, hope that helped, and again, I will make sure that this source code does make it to GitHub. In the comments will be the link.